Philippe Lambert, you are the co-chair of the Green Group and you're also a member of the Brexit Steering Committee here in the European Parliament. The Parliament are preparing for a response to uh, the, the, the vote today in Westminster on Brexit. Do you have, what do you think is going to happen next? Uh, we're anticipating that the vote says no. So what will you be asking for here in the Parliament? Well, uh, there's not a lot we can ask for. I mean, uh, the British people asked, with a slight majority, their government to negotiate Brexit. That's what the government did. Now, you may like or dislike the result, but there's few margins. Why? Because of the Good Friday Agreement that severely constrains the options that are on the table, at least for Northern Ireland. And if you don't want to separate Northern Ireland from the rest of the United Kingdom, then for the entire United Kingdom. That is the stumbling factor. That is, well, that many British politicians fail to recognize that situation, and so they want to blame Theresa May or the inflexibility of the European Union negotiators for the withdrawal agreement that has been negotiated. But actually, it is constrained by the Good Friday Agreement, first and foremost. So that's a reality. Now, what we see is that in the House of Commons, there seems to be a negative majority against that agreement. There would also be a negative majority against a no-deal Brexit. But again, no deal Brexit is what happens if nothing else happens. So if you want something else to happen than no deal Brexit, you need a positive majority. And this is where I'm lost. Because to me, it's not abundantly clear where, whether there's a positive majority in the House of Commons for any solution. Unilateral renunciation to the, the Brexit process, uh, second referendum, elections, uh, staying into the single market and customs union, so Norway plus. I don't know where the positive majority lies. And when a parliament proves unable, unable to uh, forge a positive majority, to me the next logical step is back to the people. Do you think that the prospect of a no deal by default is becoming more, of a, more likely? I've always been worried about that outcome. And frankly speaking, uh, it is very much hanging above our heads, so the risk is there and we should not underestimate it but then again i'm sorry to say but it's for the british uh, democracy to decide uh, how to avoid this again brexit is a process that was started by the united kingdom it was not the u27 starting that process so it's a unilateral act by the Euro uh, by the united kingdom i respect that but then again they have to manage the consequences of that, uh, that decision. So if, the, if we want to avoid uh, no-deal Brexit, it's for the United Kingdom either to accept the deal or to renounce Brexit.